actually i uh, took this uh, pro subscription of maro as a uh, tool for improving my preparation for the final md exam uh, so that because maro was one of the few uh, platform which could this actually was offering uh, all the subject videos at the same time so that uh, kind of uh, made me take the plan so that i can actually prepare for other subjects also so the primary source for my preparation was uh, uh, slisinger hatat for but it's a very vast uh, book it's very difficult to cover from uh, top to bottom uh, slisinger hatat part but uh, try to co- i try to cover majority of the areas which were important for the exam point of view like uh, hepatitis autoimmune uh, viral hepatitis autoimmune hepatitis uh, cholestatic disorders etc uh, i try to supplement these with a recommendation from the professional bodies like aslde easl and apasl and whenever i came across a question which was uh, very alien to me or new to me i used to bookmark those questions and then later revise and read around hello everyone in this latest series from maro we would like to invite and talk to dr ashwin who managed to secure the first rank in dm hepatology in the recently conducted inis's common entrance test just done it's an amazing feat no means simple before and we would like to get to know your journey to start before we get into it let us let me just congratulate you on the behalf of maro and everyone in it Hearty congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Great work. Before we delve into the interview and uh, let us, before we go on to the specifics of how you got in, could you please tell us about your journey as a medical student? Sure. Uh, so, I did my MBBS from Old India Institute of Medical Science, Raipur. Uh, I was the 2012 batch. So, after finishing my MBBS, I... took a gap of around one year then prepared for the pre pg exam and i was able to crack uh, all in the institute of medical sciences i got a md medicine seat over there so i my final exit exam was on uh, december 2021 so after finishing uh, the final md exam this was my first uh, serious attempt at inis wow wonderful so through and through the best institute in the country great amazing so it is no wonder that you managed to again through and through become continuing the pedigree what you have already created so let us uh, move into the specifics of this interview first we would like to know why you chose this branch at all so actually the interest to- interest towards liver diseases uh, per se started while i was doing my residency Uh, we used to get so many cases still over admissions from the gastroenterology department and others uh, so there was a lot of exposure with cases especially uh, decompensated cirrhosis and acl cases so that experience kind of uh, made me interested towards the subject per se in addition to that uh, so considering that i had this interest towards the liver diseases i was thinking about taking gastroenterology but was not that interested in luminal gastroparesis so that's when i came to know that there is a separate uh, super specialty department for dm hepatology in pgi sandeep so through some friends i could manage to get contact details of some of the seniors who did dm hepatology from pgi talked with them so got an idea how the subject is what it encompasses so that's how i got interested in the subject and gave okay, my ns so basically it is your first you understood what it is all about and then once you start liking it you went to research to how it was and then you yes. decided that it was good and you started developing a project yes, so yes, when sir. will it be around uh, first year second year final year of md so uh, the interest for hepatology started from the first year itself first year so i was actually very much interested in hepat that i used to teach my co pgs uh we used to have this discussion on what are the different pathogens this for how hd happen what are the new drugs which are got or which are approved in the field of hepatology so i was very interested in this subject from the first year itself and in addition to that i felt always felt that hepatology is a such a subject in which 
there is both there is a academic stimulation also there is a uh, stimulation of the gray matter along with there is a uh, hands on part also so that kind of always attracted me towards this and this gravitation to hepatology dm per se that that when when it start so that i have to go on so that uh, happened in the last uh, semester of my md because that's when i got to know a senior from uh, pj uh, with whom i talked and he kind of inspired me to take this okay so the role of mentorship is very important yes sir yes very nice somebody to inspire somebody to look up to is that is on Yes. So, so after that, you said that you you managed to see the department in PGI. You worked there. For yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. As I mentioned before, through this mentor, I was able to uh, get into a non DM scholarship in hepatology at PGI Chandigarh. So I, after finishing my uh, MD, uh, from January to uh, March, I did uh, a scholarship in PGI Chandigarh hepatology department. so this uh, period was very crucial because uh, during this period i get to uh, got to know the department uh, how the things were happening in the department i got to see the academics to my own eyes so i got to see the variety of cases they were uh, seeing so that kind of made my decision i felt like it, i should go for hepatic you are one of the very very rare candidates who actually work them study that was probably a uh, maybe 3 4 decades old 3 4 decades old uh, pattern work study yes, from yes. from past 2 3 decades it had gone to only studies now wonderful that's great that you managed yes. to do it the old school way. amazing good actually that helped me also in the exam sir many of the questions that came this time were practical oriented clinical scenarios so i felt as if i was seeing seeing a case in my ward a pathology ward or a case i that came to me at opd so that kind of uh, gave me an ad- advantage in this exam mm. so basically time and again everybody has uh, echoed your thought basically you decide fast and then you act upon so that is yes, the time lag that, that is the most important of the law the decision yes. and then the time from the decision to action you manage to do that at the right time then there's nothing stopping most of yes. the most of the people they have little time difficulty in deciding the one so i think you did a really nice way that you actually managed to reach out to somebody who actually was really in the branch and really found out the pros and cons of the branch and then you want to start liking the branch and then obviously once you like something yes. there's no going back. that's that's a very important take home point from this so now you said you worked in to worked in pgi for like around a month and a half two one month or two yeah two months that is again unbelievable how did you manage to do that now that was the one of the first question that everybody will ask anyone how did you manage to prepare a dmc in hepatology which is pretty quite a few in number in the country and yes sir yes. depending and despite that you managed to crack it as a first time so definitely how did you manage to divide your time and how did you manage to get the knowledge that you required to reach this level so actually sir this uh, preparation and my uh the spark towards the pathology started way before uh, my md exam even got over so i used to make this notes and used to take this notes. actually i uh, took this uh, pro subscription not matter as a uh, tool for improving my preparation for the final md exam uh, so that because matter was one of the few uh, platform which could this actually was offering uh, all the subject videos at the same time so that uh, kind of uh, made me take the plan so that i can actually prepare for other subjects also uh, to get a uh, advantage during the md final exam so that time uh, while watching the hepat videos and gastro videos i used to take notes so whatever points i thought that i will be missing later or uh, will be difficult for me to remember so such points or any new point that i used to make uh, notes and during the fi- uh, during the time whatever i got in between the duties or after the uh, duties i used to go through this so the self made notes made a uh, 
had a very important part in this preparation wonderful yes so basically decide act and then focus like yes. you just mentioned that you you whenever you get some free time you actually did put your focus yes. and effort into what you are yes sir so for hepatology you know you have so many sources for any dm aspiration at all you have got uh, your books you have got other avenues your uh, journals and obviously your uh, marrow so how did you manage to see what was important in which part i mean obviously i'm hoping that you have not finished the entire hepatology from a book so how did you manage to divide the important stuff into different different you know boxes and decide this is the box for that so the primary source for my preparation was uh, uh, slisinger hepat part but it's a very vast uh, book it's very difficult to cover from uh, top to bottom uh, slisinger hepat part but Uh, try to cover. I try to cover majority of the areas which were important for the exam point of view, like uh, hepatitis, autoimmune, uh, viral hepatitis, autoimmune hepatitis, uh, cholestatic disorders, etc. And supplement these. Uh, uh, I try to supplement these with a recommendation from the professional bodies like ASLD, EASL, and APASL. And for the some uh, areas which were more clinically oriented like uh, acls and decompensated cirrhosis and its complications that part uh, that knowledge actually came from the work that i did in the ward hepatology ward so all of this kind of and uh, along with this i also supplemented it with the notes i uh, made during the uh, my md medicine period uh, by watching the marrow videos so that was a whole uh, preparation scenario for me. so how did you manage the time because uh, uh, reading of the clasinger is pretty much quite a difficult task yeah yes. the short time you had how did you man- did you manage to start reading clasinger in your md days or after the md exam you started reading that no sir i actually started reading clasinger from the md days so. md days okay so yes, the only way from the second day Second year itself, I started reading Slimming. Yeah, and only when you can actually cover it till now. Always two three months yes. is impossible to. So yes, it's very difficult to cover Slimming uh, uh, completely just within a, a span of six months. So it's important that if you are actually starting with Slimming, you need some time to prepare. Did the videos in the map help you in mm-hmm. studying for this exam along with Slimming and the ASLD facial facial guidelines? How did that help? So, to be honest, I was not able to see much of the videos during the uh, past three four months because of the uh, SR ship. But before that, I used to watch the videos. And while watching the videos, I as I told before, I used to make some notes. So especially those points, I thought that uh, later this point I would uh, miss out easily. I will forget this point or any new drug or any new development. I used to note those points in the Uh, in my journal then i used to revise these points during the uh, last two months and in addition to that those areas like hepatitis b treatment c treatment which was which are controversial in the sense that many professional bodies will be having conflicting guidelines uh, some will be saying this is a dna level at which you will be starting the treatment and the other body will be saying this is not the level at which you will be starting treatment so in those uh, topics where there is a confusion i used to uh, watch the marrow video uh, as a one point source for getting this information mm-hmm. so okay so any specific sessions or any specific uh, classes in marrow would you like to mention that helped with yes sir yes sir so your class uh, rocket sir's class were excellent but uh, uh, there were too many uh, lectures in medicine so I was not able to go through them all I really like Nishan sir's classes, uh, cardio classes, Vaishak sir's neuro classes. So these were the main uh, main topics that I was from now. What about the mock test and grand test? And all? how did you use that? Or so um, uh, the there were many um, uh, mini tests and subject tests in Maru. I was not able to give them all. Uh, maybe around fifty percent days of the test I gave and. Uh, they kind of gave a predictive rank so most of the time i 
could get a rank within first time so kind of helping towards the uh, final preparation and whenever i came across a question which was uh, very alien to me or new to me i used to bookmark those questions and then later revise and read around that topic so if a question came from pbc i used to read that pbc part from slizinger and i would look for any recent guidelines on pbc from easl or aslt so i used to write it all down in a single place where i could actually revise on a later date just by looking at that piece so that was my preparation strategy you wrote the previous nine isc so in your opinion yes. what was there a difference in the pattern of questions that were being asked previously and now or is it just the same that is one second sub, sub question with this is uh, how do you think the split was between the medicine and uh, the liver hepatology uh, so so the last time it was the first time they conducted an iniss uh, comprising of all the major institutes so i gave it as a practice attempt Uh, i was just writing my exam my exam was still ongoing when the iniss date was there uh, it, the exam was on 7th of december my final exam was finished on 10th so i gave it as a practice attempt maybe because i was not uh, thoroughly prepared uh, i felt that the last year's exam was last session, uh, sessions exam was very tough uh, especially the hepatology part uh, but this year i felt that the liver questions were very easy Uh, so the rank deciding factor was actually the medicine part this year uh, the uh, di- uh, the division between the questions were somewhat like 50 questions from hepatology and 30 questions from medicine okay. so uh, the next is what would what would you advise two kinds of people first kind of people first kind of uh, people are those people who are starting to prepare and they want to take around a year to prepare what would you advise them how to go about their preparation so for such kind of people actually you can start with slizinger because it's a very good based textbook and many of the questions uh, the standard questions the examiners will set from the slizinger itself so if you are at least able to cover tables and charts from the slizinger that it itself is uh, pretty important uh, enough for the preparation you can supplement these things with guidelines always try to incorporate the guidelines into the preparation uh, so that is a way forward for uh, those people who have enough time for preparation the other kind of people who don't really have work the 6 months or less than that so for such people there are a uh, few resources like there is a book i came across uh, called clinical rounds in hepatology it was actually published by the faculty of pg sandigad itself a very nice book it has many points which are just of hepatology you can say so that also kind of help you if you are uh, short of time a very nice book so that can be tried and uh, second strategy for those people who started late would be to solve many questions as possible so while you solve that question you can read around that particular topic so and you yourself predict what are the are the different kind of question that can come from that topic so if you are getting a question from pbc so there was a question uh, this time in iniss so which among the following is a true statement regarding pbc so one statement was that it's commonly seen in males uh, or female uh, it's commonly seen in females so someone who has uh, read the subject would be knowing that's commonly seen in females so that's the way you read around the subject and you get to know multiple questions that will come from that topic so where does uh, the marrow app feature in any of these now? since you have not mentioned at all ha <laughs> uh, sir sir that uh, marrow app actually the questions question bank of Ma- marrow you do the test from the marrow and marrow also provided that uh, complimentary three months of that uh, neat uh, pg uh, marrow part also so you can solve many medicine questions from that part you can bookmark them for uh, later reference and while doing the grant test if you feel that any question is uh, difficult for you you can bookmark that question and then uh, this uh, uh, later revise and for those people people who have enough time they can actually start uh, viewing the videos and make notes 
very important to make notes because you will very volatile the subjects are very volatile you have to revise it again just before the exam if you are not revising it that uh, knowledge won't be uh, you can't recollect it during the exam so it's very important that you revise it during before the exam Okay. So basically, the crux of I mean, one more thing. So you do you do you agree that your uh, SRship or non-academic SR and PGI helped you a lot in the respect to the preparation this time? Yes, actually, at this time it actually helped me a lot because many of the questions were clinical oriented, especially in hepatology part. What Nearly out of the fifty questions, forty uh, questions would be clinical oriented. What about if you had attempted? I mean. If after if you had got the previous paper like you mentioned previous paper was much tougher what what yeah. would have happened if you had got the previous paper with respect to your uh, sr ship in dj what do you think about it so i guess my preparation was good this time so would have been a, a similar kind of performance if i had gotten the last year's paper also okay so basically decide first act and then don't look back and focus yes sir and use the resources as much as possible whatever is given to you and um, like uh, i am i am actually a football fan so like uh, they say about leo messi i trained hard for 17 years to become an overnight sensation so well, that's all that's there to it even though you are yes. start with one but it's the back the whole process that's what comes Yes. Great. Great talking to you. Good knowing you. I hope Likewise, your your interview would benefit some people who sure. are really looking forward to how to approach the exam and how to give it. Okay. I just want to ask whether you have any suggestions for improvement, both for me as well as for Maro. Do you have anything that you can think that could supplement and make it better for? students who are actually taking this so so one of the most important thing uh, that i liked in uh, maro videos were that uh, almost all the subjects were having this mcq discussion so that was very important because uh, those people who are in uh, need of they don't have much time to prepare from the videos they can actually watch this mcq videos because much of the concept can be cleared from this mcq discussion videos so that was a very important very nice part of the maro videos one thing that is missing in the maro videos was uh, i feel like in the neat pg part of the maro app they used to give this question banks for a particular topic there would be associated question bank but that was actually missing in uh, neat ss part of the maro so i would suggest that if you could actually add that question bank for a particular topic so that after watching that particular video session we can go and uh, uh, attempt the question bank and then get to know how much you are thorough with the concept and another thing was that ke some of the subjects are still lacking in maro app uh, the medong med part is still not there pulmonary medicine so such uh, parts can be added to the maro super specialty app the pad part is very nice so i don't have much uh, comment for that which one hepat hepatology part your videos are nice oh. thank you thank you thanks ashwin thanks a lot Uh, and we'll keep in touch keep keep in touch let's see let me know where you are all you are my number i have your number i will also call okay. you <laughs> sure 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 something from pgi you will be the first person to call <laughs> sure sir and if i ever come to, if i come to chandigarh i'll meet let's okay sir sure so oh, ashwin so you're going to the most prestigious college in india for hepatology it's probably the it is the birthplace of hepatology in india again amazing feat awesome all the best all the very best for the future i hope to keep meeting you in the future to discuss a lot of things i hope we can collaborate also later in life sure sir. thank you thank you so much best wishes and have a great time thank you sir